Now we are back in the application and here you can see the navigation panel and you can also access the folders from here and from here you can toggle between the views you can choose to view the photos as thumbnails or as a grid or list or you can choose them as a single one while editing so i'll choose this one and i will click on the single image viewer and now we will go to the right and we will open the editing section now here in the top right corner you can see the histogram you can toggle between the views you can just choose a single color and see the state of it and the luminance curve too And here three tabs are given from the adjustments section you can edit your photo in the information section you can get the full metadata of your image or you can just click on this i button over here and it will show you everything from the mode which are selected when the photograph was taken the shutter speed the aperture the iso the focal length and the camera and the lens used everything and the next section is for tags and descriptions so coming back to the adjustments tab here we have got five most used basic tools which are the gray point sample tool, the healing tool or the auto retouch brush, the color control points, the crop tool and the straightening tool. Moving towards the basic edit palettes, you can see every parameter beside which raw is written is available to you when you are editing a raw image or a raw photograph only. So that means when you are using a JPEG image, they are not going to be available. Now here under the basic edit palette sections, we have got picture control modes and there are two basic modes which are camera compatible and latest picture control. So we are going to choose latest picture control and here are some picture control modes given as you can found in your camera. I'm going to keep it at the recorded value or standard. Moving towards the next section which is white balance. Now I will choose the color temperature and keep it around 5500 which is the normal preset for daylight. I will get back to the tint section. Moving towards the next section which is exposure compensation. We can just control it from here or we can go to active delightening and from the given presets we can choose high. And you can see that exposure has been increased on all the areas of the photograph. And now we can get back to exposure compensation and we can just set it around that. Going to the adjust brightness and color. Now from here we can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation and we can also protect the highlights and shadows and we can adjust the delightening. Now the highlight protection actually helps you preserve the data in the highlights part while the shadow protection does the same for the shadows. Now de-lightening here is for increasing the exposure of the overall photograph while preserving the exposure of the highlights area. But when I am adjusting it here, you can see that the highlights portion are getting overexposed. So I will not choose it here. Moving towards the next section which is levels and curves. And from here we can choose between the RGB curves or the red, green and blue curves. I will choose blue. And by selecting those droppers over here, we can set the black point, the neutral point, the white point and we can add an anchor point. And by tapping on this, we can adjust the contrast automatically and from here we can reset the current channel or all of the channels. Set the gamma around 1 if not already set. Moving towards next section which is lightness, chroma and hue adjustment. Now here we can choose between the various modes given which are chroma, hue, color lightness and master lightness. And it is basically the same as the HSL panel in Lightroom CC on Windows or the mix panel given in the Lightroom mobile. Now here you can just set different points and you can tweak them. And in the color booster, there are two presets given which are people and nature. I'll choose nature and by adding value to the parameter, you can boost the overall color of your photograph. So I'll just keep it here and moving towards next section, which is adjust details. Now, if we just zoom in, we can see that there are just minimal noise. We can reduce it easily by going to the intensity of the noise reduction and set it around six or seven and set the sharpness to 2 or 3. 
and now we will just click on the edge noise reduction and here you can see that astro noise reduction is given and this is for the astro photographs taken with high ISO and therefore gets a lot of noise and just under that we can get sharpness adjustment and from here we can increase the sharpness without increasing the noise we can also use the unsharp mask from here and moving towards the next section which is touch up and from there we can use the retouch brush set the brush size now here if we want to remove the hole over the trunk we can get it done easily by activating the retouching brush and by painting over the hole on the trunk so it just got removed easily but is that so much content hour let's find out now here if we want to remove these hairs from this area can it be done so smoothly let's find out first reduce the brush size and now i will paint it over these hairs and as you can see that it is not so perfect it is much of a spot healing tool than a retouch brush now at this point we can't undo the change we have just made and to delete the change we have just made over the area we have to revert the whole section so we are going to deselect the retouch brush and all the changes we have made until now are lost now now a big bonus over here is the color control point which can be used multiple times and which gives you a creative control over any selective point you have chosen and you can adjust the color as well as the exposure of that point let's turn it on and add the first color control point here now as you can see that this thing here controls the radius of the affected area and we can adjust some brightness contrast and saturation too let's get to another point now here i will add some saturation and some brightness too Now here if we add a color control point by mistake you can just get back to this area and you can just delete it by tapping on the cross easily and from here you can also select any color control point and you can just click on the show affected area and you can toggle between bcs or the brightness contrast saturation or the hsb which are hue saturation and brightness or the rgb Moving towards the next section which is adjust composition and you can find here the crop and the straightening tool and the perspective control tool too. Now here I don't want to crop the photo so I will go straight to the straighten. And the next is perspective control. And this is another powerful tool we have got here. going to the next section which is camera and lens corrections and from here you can adjust camera corrections and the lens corrections too and as there are no vignette control anywhere over the editor we can go to lens corrections and from here we can adjust the vignette and the last section is versions and it works just like the versions panel of the lightroom and to export the edited photograph we can just go to file and from there click on the export option or you can just press control e and here you can set the quality choose between the different options given and just click on export the export is complete and now we can deselect all the edits and see that this was the raw image and this is the final image we have got after editing now we are going to expand the toolbar and we can see that we can import images with transfer and we can also edit a video with the movie editor and we can create a slide show or print our photograph or we can just export it simply from here so now we are going to use the movie editor given here and as you can see that we can stream a movie or combine movies or we can edit a movie so i'll click on the edit movie and let's find out how powerful it is now we need to add some movies and images 
and for that we need to get back to the NX Studio. Let's choose this one or we can import it directly from the file explorer. And as I have already told you, this is just a basic editor. We can join some clips, we can add some intro or outro to a recorded video. And from there we can add some background music, just that and nothing more. Or we can just click on the add button over here and we can choose our own background track. And now we can just click on the create movie button over here and we can create the movie with the images and clips we have selected already with some background track. So that was all for the second part or the editing section and let's meet again on the third part which was the question and answer section where I have got almost all of your questions covered. Thank you for watching.